Welcome back. Well, due to rising food commodity prices, Indonesia's annual inflation has risen to its highest level in five years. Now, on Friday, the Indonesian Central Bureau of Statistics announced that annual inflation in June came in at 4.35 percent. It is the highest of level of annual inflation since June 2017, or highest in five years. The food, beverages, and tobacco category was the biggest contributor, and in that category, chili prices contributed the most to inflation. However, Indonesia Statistics Bureau head said that rising chili prices was mostly due to weather factors which had hampered supply and increased prices. And meanwhile, monthly inflation also came in at 0.61%, higher than monthly inflation in May of 0.4%. Transportation also contributed to June's inflation as airline ticket prices continue to rise due to rising jet fuel prices and rising air flight demand. But overall, food, beverages, and tobacco contributed the most, with prices rising by 8.26% on an annual basis. And to talk more about inflation in Indonesia, we are joined by Baba Teguh Yudo Wujaksono, who is the head of the Mandiri Institute. Hi, Pa. Thank you so much for joining us this afternoon on Jakarta Mover Shakers. Thank you. Thank you, Krishna, for the invitation. Right. So let's, uh, let's get into it. Annual inflation, highest in five years in Indonesia in June. BPS, the Central Bureau of Statistics, said that this was mostly due to chili prices and weather conditions causing uh, supply issues. But in your opinion, is this a sign that inflation is becoming an increasing risk in Indonesia? But yeah, I think if we look at on uh, you know BPS uh, uh, recent data about this inflation rate, uh, and then we know that the, the food contribute a large uh, share in this inflation rate. I think mainly due to the chili prices uh, and also uh, and also about this weather. Uh, but again. Uh, if we look at on the trend, even before uh, this uh, June, if we look at on the trend of May, June, and probably July, we might anticipate that uh, you know the inflation rate will be accelerated. And uh, I think it's also useful to look at on the you know on the bigger perspective in the sense that if you look at at the global level, I think almost majority of countries experience uh, higher uh, inflation rates and mm -hmm. Indonesia actually is among a few countries with uh, inflation rate below 5%. So so uh, in short, yes, we experience uh, accelerated inflation rate in five years and mostly coming from uh, food, which is, you know, we know that uh, it's very volatile, but of course we cannot avoid in the sense of the this trend of the accelerated inflation, given that, uh, you know, at the global level, also the prices are rising. So I think that's, uh, uh, that's the message here. Right. Uh, but as you said, you know, this is a global trend of this uh, accelerating inf inflation. Um, now, do you see, so because the BPS said, oh, it's weather conditions and so forth. Um, but do you see global external factors coming into play more into Indonesia in inflation in Indonesia, for example, food prices, is this something that's becoming more, more worrying? Is this due to rising fertilizer prices due to Russia's Ukraine war and so forth? But yeah, I think uh, if we look at on the inflation rates and the factors that may affect inflation, mostly, I mean, uh, coming or a large share coming from the administrative uh, prices, for instance, like fuel uh, and energy prices. So. So far, the government uh, managed uh, to keep uh, to increase subsidies. So basically, uh, energy prices remain uh, stable, uh, fuel uh, remains stable. Although the government, uh, you know, kind of question uh, about who's getting uh, fertilizer, for instance. But again, uh, the worrying. I think uh, the most worrying aspect of this inflation is on the fundamental uh, side. I mean, if we look at you know, the price tell us something, right? So uh, I'm worried more about, the, uh, you know, the, the, the food availability rather than, you know, uh, basically prices uh, give signal about the food availability of food shortage. So so I think, uh, as you mentioned about this, uh, you know, export restriction on fertilizer and also uh, 
on you know Russian and Ukraine war. Another worrying uh, trend is uh, you know increase in pro protectionism across countries. So for instance, like like India uh, ban exports on wheat, and uh, and and other countries also follow the same thing. So this I think contribute to uh, you know worsening of the inflation rate. So I think. Uh, this kind of the supply side that the government needs to address, uh, not only on the monetary side, but also on the real sector, for instance, that we need to prepare about how to keep, you know, the, the, the food uh, and also how to manage uh, food prices uh, domestically. So, for instance, like uh, probably we can procure or stockpile uh, for a very long period uh, about uh, uh, food, for instance, like rice and other things. I think that's, uh, that's from my side. Right. Uh, as you said, you know, the food supply, there is, you know, a global food crisis going on right now. President Joko Dodo traveled uh, all the way to Russia and Ukraine to address this issue of a food crisis. So, I mean, do you see this as an increasing risk in Indonesia, you know, um, food supplies and rising food prices, especially for next month? Do you think that will, you know, further increase inflation next month or how do you see it? Yeah, this I month, think uh, so far at the moment, we, if we look at on the rise as our main staple, I think, uh, you know, uh, with uh, good weather, I mean, uh, with weather right now, I think rice production will be, uh, you know, will be satisfied the demand. So we might expect that uh, rice price will be uh, stable. And so we might expect that inflation might be stable. Uh, but again, uh, the thing is like, because we consume a lot of rice and we also at some point import rice and there is uh, there have been movements uh, for instance from other rice producers like Thailand or even Vietnam that we need to uh, monitor closely so for instance uh, uh, we the government I think need to act uh, more aggressively to secure uh, food supplies for instance to you know get in touch with Vietnam Thailand or uh, other rice producers to you know keep uh, right or to stockpile rice for a few months uh, in the next few months. I think that's that's the the, 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 the crucial aspect here to manage the inflation. And of course, uh, I think because this inflation is more on the supply side rather than on the demand side. I think right. the monetary policy. I think uh, you know uh, I understand the, the current stance of the BA related with this uh, monetary policy regarding the inflation rate. Mm, okay, so you're, you're seeing this uh, current inflation more on the supply side uh, as opposed to the demand side. So, um, I mean, are, are you projecting that uh, Bank Indonesia, Indonesia Central Bank, will not raise interest rates anytime soon, as, as, even if uh, inflation con continues to rise in July? I think if we see, uh, you know, Pak Perry's uh, statement about you know this uh, the current situation and also because it it seems to me that we will focus on the core inflation rather than headline inflation and we see that the core inflation remains stable and of course uh, the headline inflation increase uh, accelerated in the few months so uh, I, I think uh, we will keep the current stance but again with rising inflation rates I think it will give pressure to uh, to Bank Indonesia to, at the end of the day, would we'll, we'll raise uh, interest rates. So I think uh, if the trend continue by, you know, the third or fourth quarter of this year, I think uh, BE at the end of the day will we'll raise uh, interest rate as well. Right. So um, are you projecting that Bank Indonesia could raise interest rates by the third and fourth quarter? And just talk to us some of the impacts that will uh, have on the Indonesian economy, uh, its performance and its growth, because we're seeing what's, that's being, uh, what rising rates is doing to U.S. economy, for example. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, given this current trend with the accelerated inflation rate and also the concern about this uh, global stagflation, I think, you know, we anticipate that BE will trade uh, the interest at the end of the day by, let's say, the second semester of this year. And it might have impact on you know the, our uh, economic recovery. But again, to put this into the perspective is 
other factors i think also help the, the economic recovery so for instance if we look at on the current spending we have what we call as monthly spending index uh, you know the msi continue to increase despite increases in prices so we haven't observed at the moment that you know uh, increases in price somehow you know make households to reduce spending but what we observe is despite increasing uh, prices uh, consumers still spend particularly on 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 uh, you know spending related to mobility for instance like uh, you know traveling uh, gasoline and so on so right. Uh, again, uh, despite, I mean, like, although BMI my increase uh, rate, I think the other factors uh, will help the economic recovery. And also don't forget that, you know, commodity prices increase will also help uh, Indonesia economy. And also from this fiscal side, I think the government also get a kind of a windfall uh, profit because, you know, the revenue, non-tax revenue coming from uh, exported uh, commodities, uh, increase the you know the the fiscal revenue. I think that's that's the the the, the, the positive side of uh, the current right. situation. Right. Uh, um, you were making a very great point there because uh, uh, the, the 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 central bureau of statistics said that Indonesia does not need to worry about stagflation, you know, slowing growth, but higher inflation. As you said, consumer spending in Indonesia is still quite healthy despite rising prices. So we're not there yet. Indonesia is still doing quite well. Uh, so I want to ask you, because Bank Indonesia is still confident that inflation can remain in their target of 3% plus minus. So what is your opinion? Do you share that same confidence, Bob? Uh, yeah, I think given the, the current uh, data, I think it's really hard to see that, you know, the inflation rate will be under uh, BE's target, uh, you know, like 2 to uh four uh, percent so we anticipate that inflation rate might be uh, uh, above uh, four percent and uh i think by the end of this year uh i think beyond four percent uh that's what we we, we see uh, given the current trend on you know uh, prices okay but um just very very quickly maybe you have about 30 seconds you said inflation will continue to rise above four percent but as you said consumer spending is still quite healthy so any fears of stagflation or anything like that towards the end of the year, but or Indonesia's economic growth and performance will still remain positive towards uh, the end of 2022. But just very quickly. I think I said optimism. Yeah, I think I said the optimism of, you know, uh, BPS here because, you know, despite this uh, inflation rate somehow, you know, given that uh, the government also receive additional revenues coming from uh, exported commodities, so the fiscal space quite healthy uh, in the case that you know uh, the government needs to cushion the impact of uh, you know rising imported prices so that's why also the government uh, i think that the government will keep you know the, the, the even increase the current subsidy uh, to manage uh, the administered price but uh, and and i think this will help you know the economic recovery but again uh, hopefully uh, there will be no sudden decrease in commodity prices then if it happens let's say in the next year then it will be a trouble for for our budget all right commodity prices something to look uh, to watch out for but so far hopefully everything will turn out to be all right especially in indonesia but the head of the mandir institute thank you so much for joining us this afternoon